Now, all over the world, follow me. We are using America as a point of contact, not because that's the only nation. But that's the nation I live in. You know the nation you live in. If you have the flag of your nation, this is the time to pull it out. And I like all of you who are here on stage, stay with me. I want the assistant pastor to come. I'm going to place this flag on my back. And please hear this and hear it very well. You can never prosper in a nation you don't love. Whether as a citizen or an immigrant, it's impossible because scriptures can never be broken. In Psalm 122, verse 6, it said, Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. Please hear this. In Revelations 22 and verse 2, place that on the screen. Revelations 22 and verse 2. He said, in the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there a tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. So I'm using this as a point of contact. And what are we going to pray? And I, I pray the Holy Spirit will give me time to touch on it. Many people think it's God that threw the plague at us. It's not. It's sin that brought the plague on us. In 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. Forgive their sin and heal their land. Oh Lord, heal our nation. And you mention your nation's name. Oh Lord, heal America. Oh Lord, heal Canada. Oh Lord, heal Nigeria. Oh Lord, heal Russia. Oh Lord, heal China. Whatever nation it is. I'd like us to be very sensitive in the spirit. If this is all we do, mission has been accomplished. I like you, everybody, stretch forth your hands. You are at home, you have your flag, bring it out. Now all of you, come and touch. Come and touch. Now let's pray for the healing of the nations of the world. And we are using America as a point of contact. Lord, heal our nation. Lord, heal our nation. Forgive our sins. Wherever we have gone wrong, we ask for your intervention. In the name of Jesus, we ask for your intervention. We ask for your intervention. We ask for your intervention. Lord, for the sake of the righteous, however many they are, please, please intervene in our nation. Intervene in America. May the plan of the wicked concerning this nation come to naught. In the name of the Lord Jesus, heal our land. Heal our land. That's why we're here, for the healing of nations, including America, including every continent. Yes, mention that nation, where you are from, or where you are watching from. Lord, heal this land. Heal this land from this plague. Lord, heal this land from this plague. We've learned from the errors of our sins. Heal this land. Heal this land. And we are using America as a point of contact to all the nations of the world. Heal our nations. Heal our nations. Forgive our sins. Heal our nations. Heal our nations. Heal our nations. Somebody pray. Somebody pray. Somebody pray. Heal our nations, oh Lord. Starting from America, heal our nation, heal our nation. Lord, we have learned from our errors. Heal our nation. You say, return to me and I will return to you. Lord, we are returning to you as nations of the earth. Lord, heal us. Lord, heal us. Bring an end to this COVID-19 plague. In the name of the Lord Jesus, bring an end to this COVID-19 plague. In the name of Jesus. Bring an end to this COVID-19 plague. No more loss of lives in the name of Jesus. No more loss of lives. We cry for the healing of our nations. We cry for the healing of our nations in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. We bless your name. We thank you because once again, peace has been restored. We thank you because the root of COVID-19, coronavirus, has hereby been destroyed. Amen. Lord, as a people, as a nation, and as nations around the world, we turn our faces to you. You are our only source of help. Help us, O oh Lord. Amen. Heal us, O oh Lord. Amen. 
enough is enough of this global pandemic. Amen. We thank you for it, O oh Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Give him praise and give him glory all over the world. Give him praise and give him glory. Father, we exalt your name. We bless your name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Please be seated. And if you're at home, you are possibly already seated. We welcome you once again to this very, very, very unique service. And this is for the healing of our nations. The healing of our nations. We anticipate that in the shortest time, we'll be back together as a church family all across the world. All across the world. Now, hear this truth and hear it well. If you are not infected, you are affected. Yes, many of us can never be infected by this plague, but none of us can deny that the plague has not affected us. So what we are doing is out of passion. Enough is enough. Life must return back to normal. Amen? And God's name must be glorified. In the name of Jesus. All watching online, we want to ensure we please remind you to check in again. The reason we are doing this is to keep a tab. We have a very awesome group of uh, media units. We are keeping a tab. You can see on your screen today several people checking in from all across the world. So don't be left out. Please make sure you check in so we can have proper records. You are watching with us for the very first time as well. Just go in there, wcimd.com. Check in as well. Let us know uh, how we can reach you. Testimonies, please, when you are sending in testimonies, we would love to have you send alongside a picture of, of that nature so that we can just, you know, uh, keep in touch with you and, of course, have it displayed. COVID-19, two testimonies, symptoms, and one, direct contact. Not only was she safe from it, the person she contacted was infected by healing. Amen. So please know that God is still on the throne. This case didn't meet God on our ways. There's always a solution in the kingdom of God. To all of our leaders all across the state of Maryland, all our pastors, I love you. It's a long time I've seen you. I'm missing you. I hope you are not adding too much weight because work will soon begin. Amen. All of our one voice, powerful group of people, just a few are represented. This is a very talented and gifted church, not because they are the best. But the reason why they are here is we want to ensure that we streamline the faces and the people coming in, all right? Instead of bringing in new faces every time and having that changed all the time, it's not because they are better. It's just that they are chosen for this season. After a while, we switch up again and we keep moving like that. The Lord bless you. All of our leaders, all our workers, deacons, deaconesses, we love you. I hope you are watching right now. Just to let you know, we love you. We thank God for you. And the, the ever vibrant, best church I've ever pastored, Winners Chapel, Maryland. I love each one of you. I can't wait to see you and hug you because by that time, social distancing will have ended. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Understanding the healing power in the anointing oil is our topic. Understanding the healing power in the anointing oil. Please, by way of introduction, there are a few things we want to clarify today, and I believe that will lay a huge foundation for where we are going. There are two kingdoms operational in this world. Two kingdoms. In Revelation 11, 15, it said, And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and his Christ, and he shall reign forever. So from that scripture, two kingdoms. We have the kingdom of God, and then we have the kingdom of this world. The kingdom of God and the kingdom of this world. Please note that. The kingdom of God, number one, and the kingdom of this world. Please understand that the kingdom of God is ruled by God. The kingdom of God is ruled by God. And the kingdom of this world is ruled by the devil. Please make sure we can catch up on the screen because we have live audience. 
The kingdom of God is ruled by God. And the kingdom of this world is ruled by the devil. In 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4, he said, in whom the God of this world had blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. So we have the kingdom of God and the kingdom of this world. The kingdom of God is ruled by God. The kingdom of this world is ruled by the devil. But hear this, when you and I belong to the kingdom of God, even though we exist in the kingdom of this world, you are expected to dominate. How do I know that? In John 17, 16, it said, they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world, Jesus speaking. But when Jesus came, even though he was not of the world, he had to exist in the world and yet dominated the world. In Luke chapter 10, verse 17 to 19, he said, And the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils, that is, the ones who are in the world under the rulership of the devil, are subject unto us in thy name. We exist in the world, but we dominate the world. And Jesus said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Verse 19, behold, I give to you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Now, please listen. You live in the kingdom of God, but you exist in the kingdom of this world. So you dominate here. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. When we become born again, we have authority over all the works of the devil. First John chapter 3 verse 8 to 10. But please hear this. And I'd like you to understand very well where God is taking us to. Both kingdoms, the kingdom of God and the kingdom of this world are ruled by words. Words. Hebrews 11 verse 3, it said, through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Hebrews 11.3. So that the things which are seen were made, were not made out of the things which do appear. Luke 21.15. It says, I give to you a mouth and a wisdom that all of your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. Mark 11.23. It says, for verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say, that's the key word, to this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he said. So the kingdom of God and the kingdom of this world are ruled by words, by words, by words, by words. Words of faith rule the kingdom of God. Romans 10, 17. So then faith cometh. By hearing and hearing by the word of God. So words of faith rule the kingdom of God. Second Corinthians 4.13. We have been the same spirit of faith as it is written. I believed and therefore have I spoken. He said we also believe therefore we speak. So words of faith rule the kingdom of God. You know, both kingdoms are ruled by words. But to, to, to enjoy what the kingdom of God offers, you must utilize the mystery of the words of faith. But what more? Words of fear rule the kingdom of this world. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. So there is the spirit of fear that rules this world. Now, please hear this. I hear it very well. All across the world, even here in America. Listen, listen. What has killed many people in the midst of this virus is not the virus. It's the fear. There are people who are face to face with accidents. And because of fear, they die before the impact. Yet, there are people face to face with accidents and they exclaim, I refuse to die. 
The blood of Jesus. They say, no, this is not my time. And yet with impact, they survive in the same vehicle. Please watch. The fear of coronavirus has become greater than the virus. And today, people are dying of the fear of the virus. Why there are those who have impacted the virus and yet survived. Look at those two testimonies. The first patient to meet with had coronavirus, tested positive, and number two was psychiatric. Meaning that that kind of patient could misbehave, could decide to hug her. But according to her testimony, she said, I plead the blood of Jesus and I wave my mantle. We should thank God for Holy Ghost field doctors and nurses. And hear this, staying with that patient in the same environment, we don't even know if she had a mask on. Because now mask is, is already very scarce. She not only came out negative to the virus, the person that met with her was infected by health. And in a few days, within the same week, we are talking of last week, oh, tested negative to the virus. I'm speaking to people all across the world. You can imagine how many phone calls I get on a daily basis. There are people who call me and say, Pastor, please pray. The way I'm feeling is coronavirus. No test done, but the fear of the virus. The fear of the virus. Please, let's be well as the body of Christ. Not to fall a cheap victim. Job 3.25, he said, the thing that I fear, fear is a magnet. If you fear the virus, the virus will like you. The thing that I fear is greatly come upon me. So words of fear. Rule the kingdom of God. The best place to get current news is not CNN. The best place to get current news is the word of God. When people jitter and say, oh, I don't know what is happening. They are saying that this is a biological weapon. Listen, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. So it's there. It's covered. Whether biological or accidental, it doesn't matter. So beware of words of fear. Isaiah chapter 8 verse 12 and verse 13. He says, say not a confederacy to them to whom these people shall say a confederacy. Neither fear their fear, nor be afraid. Verse 13, sanctify the Lord of hosts himself and let him be your fear and let him be your dread. Don't fear the virus, fear God. Isaiah 35 verse 4. He says, say to them that of a fearful heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, even God with a recompense, and he will come and save you. I want to do a quick illustration that the Holy Spirit just gave me in the midst of this service. Quick one. Please help me, Pastor, bring. <coughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Now look at this. Where are the beans? Where are the things inside? I need them outside. Praise God. Pictures have a way of lasting with us. Bring down. Amen. Now I want you to focus. Two beans here. One is the recycle. Where's the recycle? Is this recycle is here? The next, no, it's all right. The next is trash. If you live in America, you should be used to this drill. In some parts of the world, you dump everything together. But in this part of the world, it can be a crime. One is recycle. The second is trash. Now hear this. This is how you should treat words. When you come across words, by the help of the Holy Spirit, you should be able to determine which is trash and which one is recycled. Now in the world we live in, listen, let me tell you a true story, and many of you face it.
People dump all kinds of information. And some of you consume all kinds. That's how fear comes. Listen, listen, listen. In case you are watching me, there are some information you send me I don't read. You may be watching life now. You send me some information I don't. There are people who have never sent one positive information since the virus began. Not one. So when I see it coming from them, I don't read. I, not one positive information. Everything is negative. Now, they are talking about how many people are dying. What of how many people are recovering? We just share testimony now. Two cases of coronavirus. You won't publicize that one. You will be going to publicize 100,000 people in the U.S. are dead in one day. That's the kind of news you like. I will not buy it. I will not what? I won't buy it. Somebody called me from some part of the world. He said, hey, I heard that today they had the highest death in America. I said, who told you? Because I didn't hear it. You should be concerned about your nation. You are bothered about my... Me, I'm hearing from the word of God. Hear this and I tell you the truth in Christ. No one watching this service live or anyone related to you will die. Amen. Amen? Just be rest assured. Now, this is the kind of information that comes. So if you look at this, here you have all kinds of trash. Assume this is your food trash, right? It's all messy and all of that. Somebody brings it to you. What do you do? Look for the trash. Where is trash? This trash, open and dump it. Meaning I won't revisit it. Someone else comes and gives you positive information. You can make it. In this season, be contagious instead of being contained. It's not the end of the world. God has an exemption plan for his people. You shall not die. You shall live. To declare the wonders of the Lord, you open recycle. Meaning that this is the information you pass to others. Stop passing trash. Look for helpful information that has blessed you. Recycle means it will still be used. That's the meaning of it. It will still be used. Therefore, this week, select carefully. If you allow words of fear to come across you, the virus is near. If you allow words of faith to come across you, then the virus is far. He said, there shall no evil before thee. Neither shall any plague come near thy dwelling. You know what I'm standing with God to believe? None of us will be touched. None of us will need any vaccine from this world. In Jesus' name. Please take this. The Lord bless you. God needs faith. The devil needs fear. Now, please hear this. Having said all of that, the foundation is laid. Let's now go to how the anointing oil works. Mark chapter 4, verse 11. He said, and he said unto them, unto you, it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God, but unto them that are without, all these things are done in parables. The kingdom of God operates by mysteries. And the anointing oil, as small as it is, is potent. So that's what we're about to look at in just a few moments, having laid that foundation. In Mark chapter 6, verse 7, and then we jump to verse 12 and verse 13. Mark 6, 7. And he called unto him the twelve, and began to send them forth two by two, and gave them power. Take note of that word, he gave them power. Over unclean spirits. And they went out and preached that men should repent. And they cast out many devils and anointed with oil many that were sick and healed them. Anointed with oil many that were sick and healed them. James 5, 13 to 15. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Is any sick? Let him call for the elders of the church. And let them pray over him. And here's the instruction. Anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And the Lord shall raise him up. And if he has committed any sins, they shall be forgiven him. Now, what are mysteries? Three very quick points. Number one, mysteries are divine secrets. Hidden in scriptures. Mysteries are divine secrets 
embedded or hidden in scriptures. It's hidden. It's hidden so not everyone can see it. Mysteries are divine secrets embedded in scriptures. Ephesians chapter 3, 1 to 5. So those who see the scripture on the surface may not catch the mystery beneath the surface. Number two, what are mysteries? Mysteries are things that don't make sense. Listen. <laughs> they don't make sense to the natural mind. That's why you find out when you are too natural, you can't flow in the supernatural. They may not make sense to the natural mind. Mysteries are things that don't make sense to the natural mind, yet they are the hiding place of God's power. Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 4 in his hand was the hiding place. of. They may not make sense, but when they are applied is when God shows up. Number three, what are mysteries? Mysteries are things best understood as testimonies come out of them. Listen. Mysteries are often validated by testimonies. So the best way to understand mysteries is when you hear testimonies out of it. So testimonies are teachers of mysteries. John chapter 10, 37 to 38. When testimonies erupt, then understanding erupts. Because only fools doubt proofs. He said, if I do not the works of my father, believe me not. So let the works themselves speak for their sake. So mysteries are often validated by testimonies. Now, please understand the origin of the holy anointing oil. We are not just here having fun. Why this and why in this season? The oil, the anointing oil, is an ordinance of God. Exodus chapter 30, verse 25 to 30. God himself gave the combination that makes the oil. So it's an ordinance of God. In the same Exodus chapter 30, verse 31, if you can place that on the screen, Exodus 30, 31. Exodus 30 and verse 31, we discover there that it is meant to be a forever ordinance. It said, throughout your generations. So the anointing oil is an ordinance of God. Two, the anointing oil is a forever ordinance. So it's not an ordinance that came and has gone. He said, you shall have it throughout your generations. What is there for in the anointing oil that heals? Because this mystery that I'm administering to you today, all over the world from here, all over the world, in our household, since the virus began, we take communion every night. And we take the shot of the anointing oil every night. And hear this, God is my witness, my family is watching from home right now. They will tell you that, I tell them every time we're about to take the shot of the oil, I tell them this is our vaccine. This is our vaccine. So what is in the anointing oil that, that, that heals? What is in the anointing oil that makes it a vaccine for all generations? Number one, the spirit of the Lord that heals all manner of sickness and diseases is in the oil. The spirit of the Lord. First Samuel chapter 16 verse 13. When David was anointed with oil, the spirit of the Lord came upon him. And the spirit of the Lord can't be upon you and the spirit of COVID-19 is hiding there. The spirit of the Lord that heals all manner of sicknesses and diseases. Luke chapter 4, verse 14, verse 18, verse 36, verse 40. When the spirit of the Lord came upon Jesus and he met anyone oppressed, it was instant. Number two, what is in the anointing oil that heals? The power of God that sets free from all oppressions of the devil, the power of God. So the first one is the spirit of God. The second one is the power of God. Please flow with me and flow with me very well. In James 5, 14 to 15 that we read, it's clear there that when they anointed the sick with oil, the power of the Lord will raise him up. So the power of the Lord that sets free, 
How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth, anointed the Spirit of the Lord with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. So the Spirit of the Lord, the power of the Lord. Number three, what is in the anointing oil that heals? Number three, the seal of exemption. The seal of exemption and how we need it. He said, from henceforth, let no man trouble me. For I bear in my body, Galatians 6, 17, the mark of Christ. He said, come not near anyone upon whom is the mark. Ezekiel chapter 9, verse 6. Psalm 91, verse 1 to 16, that we read every Sunday. We are clear there that there is a mark of exemption. A thousand shall fall, ten thousand at your right hand, and a thousand at your left, but it shall not come near thee. The seal of exemption. Therefore, I'm here to announce to someone, as you are anointed in the very comfort of your home, no matter what happens in the city, it shall not touch you or touch your household. Amen. Now, number four, what is in the anointing order that heals? This one is a mystery God gave to his servant, Bishop David Oedeko, the apostle of God over this great commission. The mystery of the fan and the fire. The mystery of the fan and the fire. Matthew chapter 3, verse 11 to 12, key scripture. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I'm not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. He said, whose fan is in his hand? And he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather the wheat into the garner, but he will burn the chaff with unquenchable fire. The fan is for separation. The fire is for consumption. The fan is for separation. The fire is for consumption. I'll say it again. The fan is for separation. The fire is for consumption. Now, please hear this. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. So that's the flaw. That he will gather the chaff, gather the wheat, separate from the chaff, and take action. Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? So the mystery of the fan and the fire guarantees our healing from all oppressions of the devil, including COVID-19. Therefore, I shall not bury anyone. I will not hear any evil news that anyone was lost in the name of Jesus. Now, how then do you apply the anointing oil as we begin to round up? How do you apply the anointing oil? Number one, by anointing your forehead. And that you should do every day. Whether you are going out or you are going in. Because you are not just anointing for people outside to see you, but you are anointing for forces of the spirit to note you. The world may see the physical mark, but in the realm of the spirit they note, touch not my anointed. He's anointed. We have noted him in the realm of the spirit. Don't go close there. You can go to the other houses, but don't enter the house. Anointing your forehead. Psalm 105 verse 13 to 15. How then do you apply the oil? Number two. Look and please focus. By taking a shot of the oil. That's what we do every day in our household. A shot of the oil. I will still take it today. After the one I'm doing in church, I will still take a shot of the oil. A shot of the oil means you open your bottles of oil, you pour a little bit on the lid, and then you decree, Father, as I take a shot of the oil, this is my vaccine, number one. Number two, activate the fan and the fire. And then you take it in. And then you give him praise. It's not that you have to bath with the oil. You take a shot of the oil. Anything you do without scriptural backup is tradition. I didn't say you should carry this one now and pour inside your shower or pour inside your bath and say, fan and fire, operate. Is the fan and fire going to operate on you or inside you? Number three, by anointing our houses and offices. And this is a prophetic instruction for this day from God's servant Bishop David Oedeko. Anoint your house. He, he said very clearly in one of those services that I watched early this morning. He said, don't anoint the tar. Find the soil. 
That's why most of us who are renting now, we must buy our own house because we can't be operating like that. Anoint the soil. He said, earth, oh earth, hear ye the word of the Lord. You know that scripture? Jeremiah 22 verse 29. And if you read that Exodus 30 that we read, or reference to Exodus 30, 26 to 29, you see that not just people are to be anointed, but vessels. Vessels, things can be anointed. Houses can be anointed. That's why when we are moving into a new house, we anoint the house and say, in this house, if we shall not enter here. Praise the Lord. So you apply the anointing oil by anointing your forehead as a mark of exemption. You take a shot like I showed you. No too much tradition. You don't need to be shaken. You take a shot of their oil, and then number three, you anoint your houses. Praise the Lord. Now as we close, I'd like you to take note of this. As revealed very clearly, late hours of yesterday. There are four dimensions of the anointing oil that I observe from scriptures. Four. Number one, the anointing oil is preventive. That's why he said, touch not my anointed. So it prevents you from being touched. Psalm 105 verse 15, 1 Chronicles 16, 22. Touch not. He said, let no man trouble me for I bear in my body the mark of Christ. Galatians 6, 17. Ezekiel 9, 6. So the anointing oil prevents the evil. And I like this one. It prevents. That means don't come close. Number two dimension of the anointing oil is that it is curative. Number one is preventive. Number two is curative. James 5, 13 to 15. If any is sick. Now, so listen, listen. For you to stay away from the virus, apply the mystery on your head, around your house, and take a shot. That is don't come close. But in case it has touched you before you are learning what you are learning now, it is also curative from henceforth. I never had to pray for that lady over the phone. She has been so soaked with the word that she knew what to do. She only got across to us when her testimony came. We must grow. So it is preventive, but if the virus has touched you, it is curative. Now, here this number three is very strange. It is creative. So in case the virus has destroyed your lungs, destroyed any part of your body, and I'm talking about any sickness or disease, the anointing has power to create. So it can give you brand new lungs. Job 33.4. If it's not in the Bible, don't believe. Job 33.4. The spirit of God has made. So the spirit of God, the anointing oil, is a creator. And the breath of the Almighty has given me life. Finally, number three, or number four, dimension of the anointing oil is that it is destructive. So it can destroy the root of every virus. You heard from that testimony? She said she worked last week and she was getting better but not 100%. Then she joined on Monday. We have what we call at 6 a.m. People join from all over the world. The cry of the nations. It's very strange. God gave me that word on Tuesday. He said, change the name. Tuesday. We had on Friday or so that this Sunday will be the healing of the nations. No discussion. No discussion. And it's not that anybody watched this service here. No. Now, we've been praying since two, three Wednesdays ago. Heal our land. Heal the nations. Now in Isaiah 10, 27, and the yoke shall be destroyed. There are things that are beyond healing. There are things that just need to be shattered. When you want to break loose to your next level and things are holding you down, you don't need to tamper with it. You just need a blast. A blast. So the anointing oil is preventive. The anointing oil is curative. The anointing oil is creative. And the anointing oil is destructive. Therefore, we have in our hand a mystery that will grant us mastery over COVID-19 any day, 
anytime and anywhere. Now that there's no nation left out, when Ebola struck, some nations felt it. Other nations were laughing. But now, COVID-19, everybody is feeling it. If you are not infected, you are affected. It has changed virtually everything. But I'm glad to announce you by this mystery. As you and I partake of it and spread the mystery to everyone who cares to believe, this virus becomes history. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Are you blessed? That's the end of the world. Rise on your feet. Wherever you are in your homes, this is not time to be laying down on your bed. This is time to rise right now. Lift your hands and let's give Jesus praise for his word. Let's give him praise for his word he has sent to us. <coughs> let's give him glory. Let's give him honor. Father, we give you praise. We give you all the praise. We give you all the praise. Let God hear you. At this time, I can't hear you, so it's God hearing you. Let God hear you where you are. Give him praise. Give him glory. Give him honor. <coughs> Lord, we bless your name. Lord, we bless your name. Lord, we bless your name. We glorify you all across this nation and all across the nations of the earth. We bless your name and we give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. Very quickly, before we administer the anointing oil, <clears throat> it said, if my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, He said, they turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven, forgive their sins, and heal their land. It takes a turn for God to return. Let me tell you this truth. <clears throat> it may anger some people hearing. There are some of us who don't feel that there is any virus around town. We just feel it's a holiday. We are praying, oh, but it can't touch us and we are so certain of it like we know our names. Why? He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadows of the Almighty. He said he will hide us in his pavilion. He said we are seated with Christ in heavenly places far above all principalities and powers. Where you are seated is key. To survive. I heard somebody say this morning, and I want to borrow from it. I listened to that message this morning. Very powerful, very potent. Just one part I heard. He said, now we are in the days where you have to fight to live. You can't just survive and live by accident. He said, those that know their God, their God, their God, they have to know him personally. Most of us traditionally know our God. Very few are yet to know their own God. The God that has revealed himself to you in the secret place. That is what made Moses unique. God already unveiled how he would do all those miracles in Egypt. Go and read Exodus. In the secret place. That's why those who treasure their secret, secret places will soon come out of their hiding places. It will be very clear. In the days we are living in now, if you don't know God, it's clear. If you know God, it's clear. We are rejoicing, we are excited because we know what his word says about this time. This is the end time, by the way. So why act shocked when his word has already told us what will happen and told us who will be exempted? This is time all over the world. Wherever you are, follow that link. You have to give your life to Christ. This is the time to make a decision. He said, place before you life and death, blessing and cursing. He said, choose life. We have left the days of tradition to the days of relationship. Also, you want to rededicate your life to Christ. You know what it means to be born again, but somehow, 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 you just departed. Maybe the pressures of this world, maybe your work. Maybe even the blessing of God you saw made you depart from God. But now everybody is self-quarantining at home and you are saying Jesus forgive me my sins I want to be made new I'm tired of running this race without an anchor I need your help it's not about the virus it's about eternity if the trumpet sounds now where will you and I spend eternity it will be too late then to make a decision the world is wicked I mean wicked 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 people are planning how to wipe out the earth that's the kind of world we live in. But there's a group of people when they know their God, 
they shall be secure. I face this camera right now. Do you know Jesus? If you don't know him, you don't know your source. You don't know your help. You don't know your deliverer. Wherever you are, pray this prayer with me right now. Say after me, Lord Jesus, forgive me all of my sins. Wash me in your blood. Make me a child of God. Jesus, today I confess that you are my Lord and you are my Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for I'm now born again. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, thank you for this massive harvest all across the world. We give you praise and we give you glory. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. The scripture says, if you are ashamed of me, I will be ashamed of you on that day. Now that we are not gathered together in church, the least thing you can do is follow that link. Place that link right now on the screen. Follow that link. Fill the form. Letting us know I made a decision today to surrender my life to Jesus. We need these names. We need these contacts. Not necessarily to call you or to disturb you, but to keep praying for you. To keep interceding for you. So please make sure you feel that. www.wcimd.com slash saved. Please make sure you feel that. Whether you gave your life to Christ or you rededicated your life to Christ, do so. And the Lord bless you richly in Jesus' name. Now we decree. Lift up your bottles of oil. That this is no more olive oil. But this is now the holy anointing oil. As we administer this mystery right now, we decree COVID-19 is destroyed to its roots in the name of Jesus. All across the world. Now hear this. As we administer this mystery, it will not come near you. In case it has touched you, as we administer this mystery, you are cured. In the name of Jesus Christ. In case this virus or whatever sickness has destroyed anything in your body, we decree it is recreated. Amen. And we decree, in case the virus or the cancer or that sickness or that disease is spreading around your body, we decree right now by the mystery of the holy anointing oil, it is destroyed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Now let's follow the instructions. You anoint your forehead, you take a shot, and then right there in your homes, we anoint the earth around it. We're also going to do that, anointing the earth around the church in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. Father, we give you praise. We glorify your name, Jesus. We bless your name. Anoint yourself, take a shot of the oil, and then in your various homes, make sure you anoint it. Thank you, Jesus. If you believe the word of God, you will celebrate God. Father, we thank you. We give you praise and we give you glory. We bless your name, Jesus. Thank you, Father. This is also blessed as it touches the earth around the church. We decree not just this church, but also our members. And this state is delivered in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Father, we thank you. If you are blessed, give him praise. Give him glory. We exalt your name, Jesus. We thank you, Father. Blessed be your name in Jesus' precious name. Soon and very soon we'll be meeting again, so just relax yourself. Keep enjoying the best of God. This Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we are waiting upon the Lord as our custom is in prayer and fasting. It's our spiritual week of emphasis, so we, we would possibly only broadcast live on Wednesday, uh, but by Wednesday we'll give information and instructions on how Thursday and Friday will be carried out. Please, very importantly, we had mentioned last Sunday, the train of hope is already moving. We are looking for members or those connected to us who are in any need. Please don't feel shy. We're one family. The first church, they share things among themselves. So please call the church number or send an email. We'll be glad to reach out to you. And this week, by the grace of God, the church is already making plans to be a blessing to our city, the city of Maryland, in supplying several items, um, not just within the church, but to the city. So please look out for that. God is doing great things in our midst. Make sure you check in. It's very important, as we said earlier on, checking in is very crucial. Please, wherever you are, make sure you check in so that we can keep a tab of all that God is doing. I want you to know I love you, I miss you, and I'll see you very soon to the glory of God. The love among our members is very contagious. Keep checking upon one another, and the Lord bless you richly in Jesus' name. May the Lord keep you, may he make his face shine upon you, and may he give you peace on every side in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Surely. 
God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen and amen. Peace. The Lord bless you. Please take note of all the information. I believe the media team will now begin to flash them across while we are seeing people checking in all across the world. One voice.